In this video lesson, we're going to be looking at iron and steel. Steel um, are generally types of uh, iron alloys. And we are going to be also looking at what alloys are. Alloys are much more useful than pure metals because they have more desirable properties such as strength, hardness and the physical appearance of them may uh, are much better than pure metals. Uh, so we need to know what alloys are. These are mixtures of two or more elements of which at least one of them is a metal. So you need one metal, the others can be metals or, or non-metals and if uh, you got a mixture of these which gives, a, gives good properties for the metal mixture then we call them as alloys and they are much more useful than pure metals. Steels are iron alloys um, they are alloys of iron where iron is mixed with small amount of car carbon that gives us carbon steels. When iron is mixed with other metals carefully chosen in carefully chosen proportion um, other metals such as chromium we get different types of steel with for example stainless steel. So we are going to be looking at these are the main types of things but we are going to be looking at other types of steel and their properties and the uses in this lesson. Before we go any further, let's understand this very important property of malleability of metals. Um, in particular, some alloys of uh, iron are more malleable, and so we need to understand what this exactly means. Uh, if you hit the metal block, for example, this, imagine that's a metal block maybe a steel block and you hit it hard with a hammer uh, or any other object which is really really hard and if you can really make that into a thin sheet of plate so that is a thin sheet of plate by just hitting that and that's malleable in steel industry what they actually do is they take uh, blocks of steel or thick steel sheets and they roll it through heavy rollers to press it into sheets, into thin sheets, and by adjusting the uh, the pressure on the rollers, they get the different thickness of plates. So that's how it is made, and we call this property as malleability. So if you can um, make thin sheets out of the metal due to, with pressure, we call that as malleability, and that property is malleability. Um, if the metal is not malleable, for instance, when we say a metal is very hard if you do the same thing for example hit that metal and imagine that metal is not malleable it's hard what will happen it what will happen is that will shatter which means it will break into pieces and not become a thin sheet of plate like so so then we call that as a hard metal so it may be very hard metal or alloy it may be very hard but it is not malleable. It is also worth remembering that malleable metals or alloys are good for shaping into different shapes. So you can bend the metal sheets into different shapes. So it's worth remembering that is a very useful outcome of uh, metal being uh, malleable. Okay, let's have a brief look at what happened in the blast furnace. Uh, this is useful to, as a starting point. We've already looked at in a previous lesson how iron is extracted from iron oxide and ore containing mainly iron oxide with other impurities. And now the only reaction that we need to remember is that one. That's the most important one. The other reactions are sub-reaction. We don't even have to remember these for our examination purposes, but it's just given here. Um, to for deep understanding of what ha what happens inside a blast furnace. These are other reactions that happens. For instance, carbon first reacts with oxygen giving carbon dioxide and that produces carbon monoxide on further reaction with carbon. And this is this carbon monoxide that actually reduces iron oxide to iron and carbon dioxide. But the overall reaction is iron oxide reacting with carbon producing iron and carbon dioxide. And that's what all that matters for, for us. Uh, we also need to know that this is a reduction reaction as iron oxide 
is reduced to iron, you're removing that oxygen. So in this lesson, we are going to be looking at the properties of the iron that we get here in this process. What is it made of and its properties and how is this useful and when you convert that into other types of steel by mixing with carbon or other metals, how its properties, uh, how the iron's property changes and how that makes it more, more useful than iron itself. So let's have a look at iron straight from the blast furnace. Now, if you remember, it comes as a molten uh, iron, so it can be poured into uh, casts and into shapes and be molded into shapes as it is. So it can be just poured into shapes and this, this uh, can be used as it is. Uh, this iron is very hard but brittle which means it shatters on impact so anything hitting it hard will break it. It contains 4% carbon and other impurities. As I said, you know, it's very hard but brittle, it will shatter but it will not bend or deform so it's, it hasn't got this malleability that we looked at earlier. So it's useful in making manhole covers, engine blocks, so these are the metal holes that you see in uh, on the road or pavement which is covered by a metal uh, square or circle. Um, engine, engine blocks, this require metal to be hard and not bending or changing in shape even under heavy load. So let's have a look at how this looks like. So I hope you recognize this as manhole cover. As you can see why it should not bend or deform when a heavy load passes on on top of uh, on top of the manual uh, cover a car or something going on top it should not bend or buckle it's very hard but it can shatter if it is hit very hard with a another hard material it's useful at this stage to have a very quick look at how the hardness increases with increasing percentage of carbon as you can see here the more carbon you have in the steel it it gets harder and harder which means it does not bend or it cannot be shaped into thin sheets its malleability reduces what that also means is it becomes harder but it, it's it shatters on impact okay so the low percentage of carbon iron has then the more malleable it is the less harder it is the more easily it is bent into shape so this explains why cast iron with 4% of carbon, very high amount of carbon, is very hard indeed. So as you can see the hardness is off scale here. So we need to remove this uh, or reduce the percentage of carbon in iron to make it into carbon steel which is called, uh, th these steels have better properties than uh, cast iron. So how is that done? This is done by uh, bubbling oxygen gas through molten iron. So in a container you have molten iron, oxygen gas is passed through at this very high temperature. This oxygen reacts with carbon which is present in the molten iron. So carbon in molten iron. This carbon will react with the oxygen and leave over here as carbon dioxide so what you have coming off is CO2 gas escaping the reaction vessel and by carefully controlling how much oxygen you pass through you can leave the correct amount of carbon in the iron and then you get carbon steel so the end product that you get you left you're left with is carbon steels but this is this contains carefully controlled amounts of carbon typically from 0.03% to 1.5% of carbon. Okay. To summarize that you have too much carbon in the cast iron over here in the molten iron and by passing oxygen through the molten iron carbon present in the molten iron reacts with oxygen and leaves as carbon dioxide.
uh, but by carefully controlling the amount of carbon removed you can get carbon steels in that range so initially you have 4% carbon in here in the cast iron but that's reduced now to this amount by passing the oxygen through as I have said earlier the carbon steel uh, are of two major category categories uh, the low carbon steel which is also called as mild steel contains 0.03 to 0.25 percent carbon and you should be able to describe in terms of content and properties and uses what makes this steel suitable for certain purposes and that's what that's more important so they they, ha they are malleable because not they don't contain too much carbon very small amount of carbon and if you remember the smaller the amount of carbon present the more malleable and, and bendy the steel is you should also remember it is not as strong as high carbon steel and it is not hard but it is more malleable and you can make it into um, things like car bodies which are shaped by pressure and forces. This mild steel is also use, useful in um, the steel which is used in buildings. As you can see here these are the two main uses for mild steel uh, to make car bodies. As you can see the, the body contains steel sheets which are bent into definite shapes and it's also used to, as a structural component to increase the strength of buildings uh, particularly in concrete so this steel is mild steel as you can see it's used because it's bendy so this steel actually makes the concrete a little bit flexible and not just hard and break when there is heavy load on top of it let's have a look at how the high carbon steels properties make them useful uh, in certain different ways okay so they contain high amount of carbon as you can see 0.5 to 1.5 compared to only up to 0.25 carbon in the mild steel so these are high carbon steel known for its uh, hardness and strength so they are much more stronger than the mild steel and they are very hard and they're not flexible or malleable so you can imagine so why they are used in uh, these things like screwdrivers are made with this is as you as you turn a screw with this you don't expect that to go out of shape you, you want it to remain uh, very hard particularly the tips of the screwdrivers uh, are have to be very hard and the hammer you don't want that to go out of shape and you want it to remain as hard as possible when you hit another object with a hammer you want that to be as hard as possible so hammer is used for that handheld cutting tools like chisels uh, which have they have to keep their shape as you use them to shape other things so these have to be hard and that's why high carbon steels are used so these are its uh, some uses of hard high carbon steel let's have a look at alloy steels Remember the carbon steels that we've just looked at, they are also alloy steels, but for some strange reason, strange reason, these are called alloy steels. But you need to remember they're all alloys. The carbon steels that we've just seen, they're also alloys. Now let's have a look at low alloy steels. They contain 5% of chromium, nickel, or other metals, and they are slightly more expensive because of this. More expensive than the carbon steel they are cheap because carbon is cheap now the moment you start using chromium and nickel these are expensive metals so that makes these alloy steels more expensive okay um, now what properties do they have because they because of this chromium added now they don't stretch they are very strong and they are more corrosion resistant and this makes it a perfect candidate for making um, suspension bridges such as this and you can imagine these steels they shouldn't stretch otherwise the roads will sag and uh, they start moving up and down so that's an example of how low alloy steels are useful
on the other hand high alloy steels are even more expensive this is because they contain even more uh, proportion of chromium high percentage of chromium and other nickel uh, which are expensive themselves so that makes high alloy steels which are also called a stainless steel more expensive but they are uh, very useful um, as as you can see they are used in making cutlery uh, and because they are resistant to corrosion and also keeps uh, it, it shine and so they look they keep looking good for a long long time and it's also useful in making chemical reaction and storage vessels as it's very uh, unreactive and resistant to corrosion so the chemicals cannot attack stainless steel and that makes it useful for that purpose and there are many other types of special steels and here is one other example tungsten steel it's it's a mixture of iron and tungsten and it's an alloy which has got a very high melting point and it's very hard to make it uh, this makes it an ideal candidate for making high speed cutting and drilling tools now imagine this is a drilling tool and it spins at a very high temp uh, very high speed and this produces a lot of heat so you need uh, the alloy to have very high melting point and resistant to heat and it should it should be also very hard to be able to drill into other things and the tip of that should be extremely hard so that does not erode away why can't we use pure iron pure iron is strangely very soft although when we hear about iron we think that it's very strong but pure iron is soft and that makes it less useful for many purposes and it's not even hard pure gold same thing you have to mix it with other metals to make things called things as such as jewelry uh, unless you mix them it's very soft and it's not very useful to make even jewelry and it now makes sense why we use alloys so most of the metal stuff that we use in everyday life are possibly alloys except if you think about copper cables they are made up of pure copper but most of the other metal objects that we use in everyday life is possibly alloys a quick summary now we started off with cast iron with 4% uh, of carbon a high amount of carbon and this is what we get and this is, this makes it hard very hard but brittle you remove some carbon by passing oxygen gas through molten iron and you get carbon steels by carefully controlling how much carbon is left over you get low carbon steel and high carbon steel low carbon steel contains 0 0.025 to 0.25% carbon that makes it flexible remember more carbon more harder it becomes it's flexible malleable and you can shape it um, easily and, th and that makes it useful for building material building steel and for making car bodies as you can see as you, as you know the car bodies have to be shaped um, so that requires low carbon steel high carbon steel contains point 5 to 1.45 percent carbon they are harder much stronger compared to the mild steel and that makes it useful for to make screwdrivers and cutting tools whose whose shape you don't want to change you want them to be hard the second set of alloys we have looked at is when iron is mixed with chromium and nickel you get low alloy steel and high alloy steels low alloy steels contain 5% of chromium and nickel that makes it slightly more expensive they are strong stronger than mild steel and they do not do not stretch or, and also they are resistant to corrosion more resistant to corrosion than carbon steels and so that makes it useful to make uh, long span bridges and structures where you don't need you don't want the steel to stretch and then look we had a look at high alloy steels which contain a high percentage of chromium and nickel 12 to 15 percent of chromium and nickel very resistant to corrosion and also very strong keeps it shine and look keeps looking good cutlery is made of this and reaction vessels where uh, you know you don't want the reactants to attack the metal uh, 
is where the stainless steel is more useful. We have reached the end of this video lesson. By now you should be able to describe what alloys are, why, why we don't use pure metals, why we always use alloys and you should also be able to explain different or describe different types of steel and how explain how their properties make them suitable for certain purposes you should also be able to analyze data if it's given and connect percentage of carbon and and explain how it is linked to hardness you've already seen one of this in this video tutorial when percentage of carbon is increased the hardness increases so you should know all of this by now and you should be glad to know that is the end of this lesson on iron and steel.